to guarantee wins. I'm Don Lemon. What the Week begins right now. It's been six days since the Obamas hit the campaign trail to rescue endangered Democrats. Four days since a federal appeals panel put Don't Ask, Don't Tell back in action. And one day since riot squads launched the latest tank of tear gas against French protesters. And it's only been 12 minutes since I got a damn campaign robocall on my cell phone. Welcome to What the Week. Hit it. The fight for control of Congress is heading into the final round. The clock is absolutely clicking. Democrats are on defense everywhere. More than 100 Democratic-held seats are now up for grabs. Meanwhile, in the Senate, the GOP needs to capture 10 Democratic seats. President Obama and uh, the First Lady Michelle hitting the campaign trail. And I know that we can keep this movement going. Sarah Palin fuels up the Tea Party Express for a cross-country road tour. You are winning, Joe Sixpack! Nancy Pelosi in Pittsburgh trying to save her own we, job. We will win this election. Where a massive investigation was launched into the nation's biggest banks and their foreclosure practices. The economic crisis has taken a surprising turn in France, where the government wants to raise the age of retirement from 60 to 62. In some places, the anger turned violent. They lit cars on fire, and the police responded with tear gas. The government wants to bring back Don't Ask, Don't Tell, pending an appeal, and really pending a decision by Congress to repeal it. And for victims of gay bullying, a message. It gets better. Well, that was the hard news. But the soundbite everyone is still talking about came from a radio debate between two Senate hopefuls in the blandest state in the Union, Delaware. Sorry. Democrat Chris Coons, the Yale-educated lawyer and current favorite in the polls, squared off Tuesday with a Tea Party, not a witch, Christine O'Donnell. And what should have been an uneventful debate instead turned into a viral video sensation after O'Donnell got a lesson in Constitutional Law 101 in front of a room full of wannabe lawyers at Widener Law School. The lawyer nerds nearly fell off their seats in fits of laughter after this exchange. Where in the Constitution is separation of church and state? It's in... You no, know, an excellent point. Hold on, hold on, please. Please. You're telling me that the separation of church and state is found in the First Amendment. Government shall make no establishment of religion. That's in the First Amendment. Oh, just another kick in the teeth for the O'Donnell campaign who've been fighting off Saturday Night Live parodies and internet slam fest for weeks now. But here's the question no one stopped to ask. Was Christine O'Donnell right? Okay, this is the First Amendment. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. Now the courts have indeed interpreted that to include a separation of church and state. So. While O'Donnell might be technically right when she says the phrase isn't expressively written into the Constitution, for all intents and purposes, the point goes to Coons. But listen to what Christine O'Donnell said in her own defense. I'm sorry I didn't bring my Constitution with me. Um, fortunately, senators don't have to memorize the Constitution. Well, that's a, a good point. I'll be the first to admit I had to look all this stuff up myself. So, should senators have to the Constitution uh, tattooed to their brains. Does anybody really know what's in the Constitution? I crashed your lunch break to find out. Hey, can I crash your lunch? Hey guys, can I crash your lunch? May I crash your lunch, ladies? Hello? What's your favorite amendment? The one that repeals prohibition. <laughs> uh, the right to bear arms. The right to bear arms, which is what you're doing right now. <laughs> I see. Is there anything you'd like to take from the Constitution, take out of it, or? Oh, definitely. What would you like to take out? I'd like to repeal the 16th Amendment. 16 is uh, Congress will have power to lay and collect taxes on income. No, that's... 
Yeah, that's the income tax one. Yeah, that's a crappy one. You don't like that one. Don't like that one. How familiar should congressmen and congresswomen be with the U.S. Constitution? Should they memorize it? Should they just be really familiar, or is it not super important? It's super important, and they probably should be tested every five years, just like a driver's license. The Constitution, when you read it, it's very short. Absolutely, it's basic to what they do. I think anyone that's running with political office should understand of what's going on with yes. the Constitution, the laws, and what they're trying Continue to do. Continue to, to talk. To I like your opinion. I think you uh, like the hair. Oh, I do. I don't think necessarily, like, to get elected, you should have to know because you're supposed to be representative of your constituency, and we're all kind of stupid. But, um, but you should, you should learn it. You should be one of the smartest people in your constituency. Well, if you're going to live in this country, and especially if you're going to run for office, you have to know the Constitution, at least the Bill of Rights. So feed your brain by going to archives.gov and click on Constitution. All right, well, thousands of scientists, over hundreds of years of research, but apparently most of you believe Glenn Beck, huh? Yeah, we're talking apes and the evolution of man on the other side, folks. Okay, there's this guy, Glenn Beck. A few days ago, he called evolution ridiculous. Take a listen. I'm not God, so I don't know how God creates. I don't think we came from monkeys. I think that's ridiculous. I, I haven't seen the half monkey, half person yet. What? What? Half monkey, half person? Nobody, nobody's ever insinuated that that's what evolution is. And ridiculous, the National Academy of Sciences says there's no debate about evolution because, quote, the concept has withstood extensive testing by many thousands of scientists for more than a century. Which brings us to our segment, You Are Here. And my weekly question, how do we get here? And by here, I don't mean how do we get here from primates. I mean, how do we get here to a time when people like Glenn Beck and these 2008 presidential candidates still don't believe in evolution? Okay, well, let's go back to 1859. Charles Darwin, he publishes his book on the origin of species. Remember, the one that says humans evolved from lower species over time through natural selection, you know, the survival of the fittest. Well, the same thing, by the way, goes for plants and animals. Anyway, it, it doesn't take long for the scientific community to embrace the theory. All right, here it is, pretty simple. Well, the teachers in U.S. public schools start adding it to their curriculums, and then, of course, the people who don't believe start getting louder, and several states start trying to ban the teaching of evolution. The courts get involved, remember the uh, Scopes monkey trial? And eventually, a case much like the Scopes case makes its way to the Supreme Court, all right? In 1986, the high court ruled that it's unconstitutional for the state of Arkansas to ban teaching evolution. So basically, the uh, evolution haters, well, they're shot down. But clearly, they don't go away. In fact, recent polling shows that less than half of all Americans believe in Darwin's theory of evolution, which means if you do the math, the majority of Americans theoretically agree with this guy. Yeah. I guess the question is, do you trust guys like me or Glenn Beck who have TV and radio shows, or do you trust the thousands of scientists I talked about a moment ago? Well, another tough topic, racism and bigotry. Why is it so damn hard for us to talk about it? I took my cameras out to ask you. 